everybody, it's the Soap Man. I'm going to try a new technique today. I've been seeing it on the internet quite a good bit. I'm sure some of you have too. It is called the Tall and Skinny Shimmy. This is not something I invented or created. I found this on the internet. I'm just copying, um, I'm giving credit where credit is due, just using some ideas that I've seen on the internet. Uh, I'm going to have five different colors. I'm using my same tried and true recipe. I've already mixed the lye and the oils together, or the, the lye, and I've already uh, uh, liquefied my oils. My recipe is 15 ounces olive oil, 15 ounces coconut oil, 4.8 ounces of lye, 10 ounces of water. Now that is a 5% super fat. It's usually suggested that you use a higher percentage of super fat when you use that much castor oil. I like coconut oil. I like the coconut oil because it gives a very thick, dense, cleansing lather, and I love it. And people who use my soap say they love it. But the way I offer a heavier super fat is adding the colors. I have five different colors. Four of the colors each has a tablespoon of grapeseed oil and the fifth color has a tablespoon of castor oil. Now, that's really, I'm trying something different with that. You can see this, that's a very, very thick color there. That's the one with the castor oil. The others have the grapeseed oil. It's nice thin. We're gonna try this. I'm trying a lot of different new things here, but that gives a very, very extra, that gives a lot of extra super fat into this to make it a nice, gentle, nourishing bar of soap. So let's get started before I run out of time. I'm going to go ahead and my lye water has already cooled to about 110 degrees. It's cloudy because uh, it, it has a uh, test of silk mixed in with it. So here we go. Alright, bear with me. We'll make a little noise first. We all know how this goes. Everything's relatively well emulsified. I'm going to put approximately 10 ounces in each container. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to use it. I'm going to measure it to get it semi close. I'm not worried about being extremely precise on this. But I've got to move fairly fast. I don't want a thin trace, but I don't want a thick one either. I want just sort of a medium. All right, there's 10 almost exactly, that's good. I can tell that I am not going to come out exact. Let's see, I better recalculate that one. Okay, let's see how close we are. Well, not actually as close as I had expected. Sometimes that happens. Let's get this excess out of here. And I'll pour some off. Don't have a whole lot of time to play because I don't want this to get too terribly thick. 
my recipe generally behaves pretty well. If I want it nice and thick, I'll usually leave it hot and I'll stick blend a lot. If I want it thin, I'll work with cooler temperature and not stick blend as much, which is pretty common actually. But mine generally works pretty well when I want either. Okay. Now, I'm going to start with my colors, mixing them together. I'm just pretty much going to pour them in because I've already mixed them very, very well. With the colors, the color, the colors I have, the yellow is Brambleberry's Fizzy Lemonade. The green is a combination of premium oxide and fizzy lemonade. I wanted to lighten it up. The purple is something I'm trying, which it's not looking very purple. It is um, blue mica and brambleberries um, tangerine wow. It's not looking real purple here, but you know, that's okay. I'm not really that concerned about it. I've mixed those together, which normally I don't. I generally don't mix that much. And then the red, is, which I'm gonna have to use here in just a second here. I'm gonna have to probably scoop this out because it's really thick. The red is Brambleberries, um, I believe they call it Sparkly Merlot or Merlot Sparkle or something like that. And that's the one that's in the castor oil. It's really thick here. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Though. a quick whisk and I'll give them a quick stick blend. Usually if I work from lightest to darkest, I don't need to clean these in between. Now actually this is looking pretty purple now. I'm pleased with that. That's actually looking very purple. but I'm going to want this thicker, so I want to get that mixed really well too, especially with the oxides. Oxides, although I don't have titanium dioxide, oxides tend to give you glycerin rivers if it gets too hot, and I want this to go through gel phase, and mixing them really well is one way to help at least reduce or prevent the risk of your glycerin river. So I'm going to start, I'm going to mix them pretty well to a semi-thick consistency, starting with light. And you probably can't see this, I'm sorry. Probably can't see it that well, but you know what I'm doing. That's a nice consistency, sort of like pudding. This red is really thick. I'm probably going to pour it first, as a matter of fact. This involves putting some... I've just got a pin here. Am I in view? Yes, I am. I've just got a pin here and tilting it and pouring this down the side of your mold. I don't know if you can see this or not. I have just a simple point-and-shoot camera. I'm not a professional, but I'm just pointing this, pouring this down the side of the mold. I'm going to pour all of it in, all of this at one time down the side of the mold at that tilt and I'm not worried about having 
leftovers in here because I'm going to put that on top. I'm going to make sure I get all this down in the mold, down in there. Clean that up. All right, now I'm going to tilt it the opposite direction. And I'm going to pour my yellow. It's getting nice and thick too, but not too thick. That's kind of the way I wanted it. Just pour this down the side of the mold. Let it run down the side and mix in with the red. And you know, this may be a complete disaster. Even if it is, the soap itself will still be good. This is a little thicker than I wanted. That's all right. All right, get all that down in there. Let's tilt the other way. Now let's put a nice contrast. Let's get the black with this. Um, yeah. that down in there. All right, I'm going to tilt it the other way. I'm going to pour the green. I think this is going to turn out really well. I'm pleased with the way it's looking so far. I think I'm going to really like this. And some of you are probably thinking, okay, what fragrance did you put in? I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. Let me pour my last color. We're going to retilt this the opposite direction. And pour the purple. And actually, the purple's not looking half bad. flat now and tap it make sure to get the air bubbles out we all know what's going on here yeah I'm liking the way this is looking okay I did not put a fragrance in this I normally don't fragrance my soap I do occasionally I normally don't uh, this is not a business this is a hobby I give my soap away as part of a community project with the church and I just generally don't work with with color with, with um, fragrances. I prefer it without myself and I use this myself and uh, that adds a lot of cost as well and this is like I say just a hobby. I give all this away except for what I keep myself and for my family. Um, so this has no fragrance in it. I prefer it without myself and because I'm trying so many different things here I just don't want any surprises. Now I'm going to pour the rest of this all these colors on top no particular fashion just so I get the excess out. It's still pretty, pretty thin, semi-thin. It's kind of like a thick gravy. Like a thick gravy to put on your mashed potatoes at Thanksgiving. It's about that consistency. Very workable. This red's a little bit thicker. But my tried and true recipe usually before performs very well whether I want a thick or a thin. I've not tried super, super thin batters, although I'm getting ready to.
I'm liking this purple after all. I hope it goes through some pontification and keeps this. I'm really liking this so far. Alright, can y'all still see that? Yes, you can. Let's just make sure. Alright, there we are. Now I'm going to try to make something out of this fur before we go any farther. Let's see, leave you in view there. Once again, keep in mind, I have not, I don't have professional equipment because I'm not a professional and this is not a business. I have just a very simple point-and-shoot digital camera. I'll upload this to my computer or put it on the hard drive and upload it to YouTube. But I've learned so much on YouTube that I just decided I need to go ahead and put in, I need to go ahead and do the same thing. Maybe some of you will learn from this. I'm just going to do the feather. That's not quite looking the way I was hoping. There, it's taking a little more form. That looks better. Okay, yeah, I like that after all. Final step before letting this sit is I want to cover it in 91% or higher. This is 91%, but I think you should use at least 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. That will prevent soda ash, and if I do not do this, this will be covered in soda ash. Soda ash won't hurt it. It'll just ruin that pretty top. It'll just have a white, it'll look like it has like white powder on it and ruin the niceness of it. So it won't hurt it if it's on there, but this will prevent it. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and cover this, wrap it to pr promote gel phase. I'll come back in about 10 minutes later and put another coat of the alcohol on it just to be sure. So anyway, that's all I have today. We'll cut this tomorrow, so I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.